Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me here again today. And if you're new here, I'm Vic, a rising senior or final year student at Yale University. Now, I've seen a ton of application tip videos online on how to get into Yale and the Ivy Leagues, but I don't think we talk enough about the mindsets that I think are important to have before you get into these schools. And so in this video, I'm going to share with you guys some of the mindset habits that I think got me into Yale and also helped me in life in general. So I'm sure this will be helpful to you even if you don't intend to apply to Yale. Let's get right to it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is falling in love with the process of learning. Wisdom is not a product of schooling, but of the lifelong attempt to acquire it. Yes, I know loving to learn is easier said than done. I think a lot of us equate learning with going to school and going to school with an endless cycle of memorizing facts and regurgitating them for exams. And trust me, that was me at one point too. In fact, I think many of you don't know this about me, but there was a point in my life when I was a really bad student, I got really bad grades, and I was often the lower half of my class. A lot of things happened between the ages of 14 to 17 to help me fall in love with the process of learning. But when I finally started to explore content and develop skills outside of what was required from me in the classroom, that was when doors of opportunities started to open for me. You might know from my previous videos that one of the biggest reasons why I got into Yale was because of my environmental interests. The first year at Yale, I went to speak to the admissions officer who read my application and he told me that one of the reasons why I stood out in comparison to the rest of the applicants in my pool was because of the fact that I was interested in environmental studies, which not a lot of people were interested in at that time. But this environmental interest, which essentially got me into Yale, only came about when I started to explore outside of the classroom and took it upon myself to see what I could learn about the world beyond the textbook. I talked about how I arrived at my environmental interests in a different video that I did over here and so I won't repeat what I said in that video but I will read this short excerpt from my application essay to Yale which I think has relevance to what I'm saying. I signed up for my first environmental conference after discovering it online, only informing my mother once I had acquired leave from school and requested for an exception to the age requirement. I was the youngest participant there. There I was on a Friday afternoon, an hour late because of school, creeping into the auditorium during the Minister of Environment's opening address. Stepping on toes on the way to my seat was a great conversation starter. Within an hour, I had befriended an aspiring environmental lawyer and a geography teacher. Throughout the conference, this became a common occurrence as I mingled with other delegates and experts. This unfamiliarity felt exhilarating. I was the one furiously taking notes in the front row, repeatedly raising her hand during question time and remaining behind at every break to clarify doubts. I remember feeling this pure sense of excitement to learn about this entire world that I didn't know existed, talking to the environmental journalists and the environmental lawyers and the teachers and all these people who were doing great work within this field. This excited me beyond measure because I was getting a taste of how academic knowledge can be applied in the real world and that's not something that you always get to see from the classroom. And this is what spurred me to participate more, to learn more, to contribute more and honestly I think it made me a much more interesting applicant and interesting person in general because it became clear that I was trying to pursue knowledge beyond what was expected of a typical student. And this is not something that you can fake, the desire to learn more, to grow, to consume knowledge and that is exactly what Yale is looking for in its students. People who are able to take advantage of all the resources that Yale has available to them. So try your best to find magic in the process of discovery itself. Don't take challenging classes just because you think they'll look good on paper but genuinely because you want to explore those areas of interest. Learn for the sake of learning and I promise you your life will be better for it no matter what school you get into. My second mindset habit is to let your why guide you. A fun fact for those of you who didn't know is that I only decided to apply to the United States of America when I was 17 years old. Not even to Yale, but just to the US. And the reason why I picked the US is because only the US offered causes that I was interested in studying. And why did I pick Yale? 
One of the biggest reasons why is because I liked the structure of the environmental studies major. And I also wanted to take graduate classes in the Yale School of Environment, which is one of the best graduate environmental schools in the world. Of course, there are many students who enter Yale not even knowing what they want to major in. And if that's you, that's completely okay. What I'm saying is that I think it really helped me in my application process because I focused first on what my interests were, on what I wanted to get out of my Yale experience, and I channeled that into my application. And I think that really helped me shine as an applicant for several reasons. First of all, I had a higher chance of getting into Yale because there was a good match between what Yale could offer me and what I was interested in getting out of my college experience. It set me apart from all the other applicants who just wanted to apply to Yale because it's a good school, because of the residents college system, etc, etc. I also liked those things about Yale, but I also had this whole other part of Yale that I was drawn to, and I really highlighted that in my application. Secondly, letting my why guide me really helped me get in because it meant that before even deciding I wanted to apply to Yale, I had already built up so much knowledge and experience doing environmentally related things. This meant that all my extracurriculars were already aligned with the identity that I wanted to create for myself in my application. I had unknowingly built my resume without even realizing it. Those who forget why show up to the race every day to outdo someone else instead of to outdo themselves. For me, my why was clear from the very beginning. I wanted to go to Yale because I wanted to learn more about this field of study that I found really interesting. And if Yale didn't accept me, I would have been fine because I would have just gone somewhere else to do the same thing. I knew I was going to be okay because Yale wasn't the be all and end all of my life. I have so many 13 and 14 year olds writing to me telling me that Yale is their dream school and I think it's amazing to have such grand dreams when you're so young. But I also encourage every one of you thinking about applying to Yale to consider why Yale? Is it just the image of the school? Is it because you think going to Yale will lead you to the path of success? If you can't answer that question why, I urge you to instead think about where you want your future to go. What are your interests? Who do you want to be? And if you're struggling with that, you can watch this video that I did over here on how I found my passion and something to take note of on your own journey. As you figure out your interests and come up with an idea of what you might potentially want to study in university, you might find that Yale isn't even the place for you to go and do that. For example, if I wanted to do medicine, I would have stayed in Singapore or maybe gone to the UK. I wouldn't have gone to the US. But I got into Yale because it just so happened that my interests aligned with what they were looking for. And so I encourage you to let your why guide you and it will help you in life in the long run, no matter what school you go to. Mindset habit number three is to leave no stone unturned, which is to say, be inquisitive, stay curious, and always ask questions. Millions saw the apple fall, but Newton asked why. Between the ages of 13 and 18, I remember asking so many questions in class that sometimes my teachers would get annoyed at me, especially in biology and geography, which turned out to be actually the subjects that I did the best in. But looking back, Always asking why and not settling until I had my answers really helped me in concrete ways to get into Yale as well. And here's why. Firstly, it helped me academically to do well because obviously you're always clarifying your doubts. But also it showed my teachers that I had a good work ethic. I always did my best to ask intelligent and important questions, not dumb ones that can be found in a textbook. So it helped me stand out because it showed the teachers, hey, she's paying attention and hey, she's trying to learn more and clarify all of the things that she's not clear on. Your teachers will notice you and then they will help you write the better testimonials when the time comes to apply to Yale. Applying this leave no stone unturned mentality really helped me in the application process as well because it meant that I watched all of the YouTube videos, read all of the links on the Yale website and read all the forum pages on how to apply to Yale as an international student. If I google a question like for example how to get into Yale as an international student, I would open up all of the web pages on the first few pages of the Google search results and I would read them all. So never be afraid of sounding ignorant, just keep asking those questions. There are no foolish questions, and no man becomes a fool until he has stopped asking them. 
Number four is to detach from the outcome. And if you've been around for a while, you might know what I'm going to say because I've said it in literally every single Yale application video that I've done so far. You can get good grades, write amazing essays, exhaust all of the extracurricular opportunities available for you, and you still cannot predict the outcome because you never know who is going to be applying in your cycle and how you compare against them. So work as hard as you can, try your best, send in your application, and then let it go. There is no point in trying to predict the outcome, to let worry and overthinking cloud your mind. You've been working on this application for so long, so just take a break, take a walk, take a bath, go relax. And I promise you, this will not just help you now during this process, but also through life in general. Because there are so many things in life that we cannot control, and we need to learn how to let go, let things happen as they are meant to, and not take life so seriously. I know it is easier said than done, but try your best not to put Yale on a pedestal, because there are so many ways to a successful and fulfilling and happy life, no matter what school you go to. Remember that. This final mindset I'm going to share with you is related to the previous one, but I'm going to make it its own point because I think it's so important to remember. We are not our accomplishments. I am very grateful to have been accepted into Yale, but I remember telling myself time and time again during this entire process that if I don't get in, it is not an indicator at all of my self-worth or what I'm capable of as a person. Experiencing any type of rejection will feel painful and it can make you feel like you're not good enough. But I want to remind you that your intrinsic value as a person should never be tied to your external accomplishments. It's like a baby. When a baby is born, people love it just because it exists. It is life. It hasn't done anything. It hasn't accomplished anything. But everyone is fawning over it, giving it love. But somewhere along the way, as we grow up, we are conditioned to think by society that we are better when we get good grades, when we achieve more in life, when we have more material wealth. It's something that is reinforced by praise from our teachers, from our family members, and all of us have experienced this in some form or another. But that doesn't make sense because there's value intrinsic in life itself. Who you are and what you have accomplished is not an indicator at all of your potential and who you can become. And I know you might be thinking, who is she to say this? She already got into Yale. But trust me, as I mentioned earlier on in this video, there was a time in my life where I got bad grades, when I was a bad student. And I know how it feels like to feel like you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, like you're never going to be successful in life. Oh my god! <laughs> and I'm so grateful for my mom at that time who supported me and reminded me the exact things that I'm going to tell you right now. That it's better to work your hardest than to get the best grades that it's better to be kind, to be a good person, to be happy, than to have a string of accomplishments under your belt. Because if we cling on to this belief that we are our accomplishments, we will always be chasing the wrong things. And even when we get it, we will never be satisfied. At this point, you might be wondering, how did this mindset get me into Yale? The simple answer is that it didn't, but what it did give me was something even more important. The understanding that even if I didn't get into Yale, I was still a complete and whole and valuable person. That no matter where I studied, I could be whoever I wanted to be. And that I would walk whatever path I had in front of me with my head head high and make it my own. And that's why at this point, I want to encourage all of the high school students watching this to not worry too much about getting into Yale or whatever your dream school might be. Keep pushing yourself hard in your extracurriculars, keep doing well in school, but do that for yourself and not to get into that school. I think it's so much better to improve yourself and stretch yourself because you want to and pursue the things that you love, not just do the things that you think will look good on paper. That being said, I'm not saying to stop chasing your Ivy League dreams. I'm just saying to ground it in an understanding that you are still a valuable person regardless of whatever you go and study. For those of you who remain interested in applying to Yale, please check out the description box and also the cards up here for more videos that I did sharing how I got into Yale. I share my essays, my application tips and things like that. So definitely feel free to check those out if you still would like to apply after watching this video. If you got to this point, definitely don't forget to like and subscribe for very similar content coming real soon.